On the east coast of Florida, there is a 20-mile stretch of beach known as the Archie Carr National Wildlife Refuge, named for the pioneering sea turtle biologists who recognized the importance of these beaches to nesting loggerhead and green sea turtles. The refuge is a mosaic of private homes, businesses, and conservation lands managed by multiple government agencies. Since its designation in 1990, approximately half of the land on the Barrier Island has been preserved to protect lands adjacent to sea turtle nesting beaches, as well as other threatened coastal habitats. Until now, the nesting process, which occurs during summer months and predominantly at night, was difficult to document without the use of artificial lights, which are known to disturb nesting females. Traditional low-light cameras, like the infrared cameras used to shoot this video clip, generally require the subject to be very close. Recent advancements in camera technology, including the ability of digital cameras to capture sufficient light with short exposures, now give us the opportunity to see what transpires on the beach at night in full color, and with enough detail to witness sea turtle behavior as never before. By taking a picture every 30 seconds and digitally stitching them together, we can create a time-lapse movie, compressing the nesting process from a matter of hours to a few minutes. In 2011, researchers at the Brevard County Eel Program Barrier Island Center received funding through the Florida Sea Turtle License Plate Grant Program to deploy unmanned fixed focus cameras on the observation deck to document sea turtle nesting behavior and interaction with humans. In 2012, the project was expanded to include another unmanned fixed focus camera six miles north of the Barrier Island Center, adjacent to one of the refuge's most densely populated neighborhoods. In addition to the fixed cameras, Members of the research team would record throughout the night from a beach access just north of the Barrier Island Center with cameras equipped with telephoto lenses that could zoom in on individual turtles and other activities on the beach. Since these beaches formed at the end of the last ice age 11,000 years ago, they have been used as nesting habitats for sea turtles. The most common species that nest within the refuge is the loggerhead seen here. Loggerheads can be identified by their large heads and yellow-orange hue. Their shells are often adorned with barnacles and algae. The green sea turtles seen here also commonly nest within the refuge. They have a comparatively smaller head than the loggerheads, and their shells are often free of barnacles and algae, giving them a shiny appearance. Green turtles also have a longer tail than the loggerheads, and this can help identify their tracks by the tail drag visible down the middle. Another important distinction between the two species is that the loggerheads are listed as threatened, meaning that their populations are declining and that they are in danger of becoming extinct. While green turtles are listed as endangered, meaning that they are less common than the loggerheads and will soon be extinct if steps are not taken to ensure their survival. The nesting process for greens and loggerheads are very similar with a few exceptions. Both start with a female who is ready to nest crawling onto the beach. Sometimes there can be a great deal of turtle traffic to contend with. This loggerhead makes her way up the beach past the high tide line until she finds a suitable location to lay her eggs. Once she has selected a nesting location and has cleared away the loose dry sand with her front flippers, she will begin to move from side to side, indicating that she is digging her egg chamber with her rear flippers. This clip, which was shot in real time with an infrared camera, shows how she alternates between flippers, scooping out sand and casting it aside. When the egg chamber is ready, her body will still and she will begin depositing her eggs. 
lifting her rear flippers slightly with each contraction. When she deposits all of her eggs, she will begin to fill in her egg chamber, packing the sand with the knees of her rear flippers, after which she will begin using her front flippers to disguise the nest. When she is finally done, she crawls back down the beach, stopping several times along the way to rest, until finally she reaches the relative weightlessness of the ocean. Green sea turtles follow the same basic steps, though they tend to dig much deeper body pits and take longer than the loggerheads to complete the nesting process. An analysis of nesting durations in front of the Barrier Island Center in 2011 showed that green turtles took an average of two and a half hours, while loggerheads took only an hour and a half. Not every turtle that emerges from the surf completes the nesting process. Some search around for a suitable spot and not finding one to their liking return to the ocean without nesting. This is known as a false crawl. An analysis of the data collected at the Barrier Island Center in 2011 showed that only about one-third of the turtles that emerged from the surf and left a discernible track resulted in a nest. While hundreds of others barely make it out of the surf before abandoning the nesting attempt, these turtles did not leave discernible tracks on the beach and would not be counted in the morning surveys. This behavior is not completely understood, though it may be that they are using these brief forays onto the beach to orient themselves. Given our love of the beach and our fascination with sea turtles, the nesting process does not always take place in isolation. One way for individuals to witness the nesting process is through a guided sea turtle walk like those offered at the Barrier Island Center during June and July. While visitors listen to a presentation on sea turtles in the center's auditorium, scouts are busy walking the beach in search of a nesting loggerhead sea turtle. Once a turtle has been found, the scout will quietly approach, careful to only use red lights that are not visible to the turtle. The group can only approach her after she has begun depositing her eggs. Disturbing her before that can lead to the female abandoning the nest. When the turtle is ready, the scout radios the group. The group is escorted to the turtle and members of the group can take turns watching the female depositing her eggs and covering the nest, after which they can follow her back to the ocean. When properly conducted by trained and licensed guide, this amazing experience does not impact the turtle's behavior. Though state laws prohibit the disturbance or harassment of sea turtles and local laws prohibit the use of artificial lights that disturb sea turtles, there are many individuals on the beach at night during the nesting season that are not associated with guided turtle walks. Whether ignorant of the law or indifferent to them, our cameras discovered numerous instances where people interfered with nesting turtles both directly and indirectly.
On several occasions, we witnessed recreational fishermen using bright white flashlights or lanterns on the beach. In one instance, a group fishing on the beach accidentally hooks a sea turtle, and after getting it to shore, take the time to photograph it before releasing it. In this instance, an individual directly approaches a turtle emerging from the surf and shines a flashlight at it, spooking it back into the water. People also like to simply visit the beach at night, in this case building an illegal campfire which they quickly extinguish as a turtle researcher approaches on an ATV. As we expected, the camera located adjacent to the densely populated neighborhood had lots of foot traffic and artificial light use particularly on weekend nights between sunset and midnight. Some nights must be particularly confusing to the nesting sea turtles. One can only imagine what is going through their heads as they witness the 4th of July displays up and down the coast or the launch of a rocket from the Kennedy Space Center. One concern of individuals leading private turtle walks is that the average person cannot distinguish a green turtle from a loggerhead. Not only are greens more skittish than loggerheads, and therefore more likely to be spooked, but their status as endangered as opposed to threatened means that disturbing them carries stiff legal penalties. Despite the number of people using the beach at night within the refuge, only 23 instances of humans appearing to disturb sea turtles were recorded in front of the Barrier Island Center in 2011. In addition, even as the human population grew between 1982 and today, the number of green turtles nesting within the refuge has grown exponentially perhaps one of the greatest conservation success stories of our time. While we still have much to do in terms of protecting sea turtles and educating the public, there is cause for hope that the number of nesting females and the resulting hatchlings will continue to grow.